our Salesforce connectors action is ready to update. So we'll need to specify which Salesforce fields will actually be updated and how we'll update them. To update the proper account record in Salesforce, you need to create a map to use the database customer account name and phone information because it's unique to each record. Salesforce uses an object's internal ID field as a direct way to identify the record which needs to be updated. Since this ID field is not available in the database source data, we're going to add a connector call function to query the account based on the name and phone. And Salesforce will then return the record's internal ID. Next, we'll retrieve the output contained in the Salesforce internal ID field and map it to the destination ID field. The only field we want to update in the Salesforce record is the service level agreement. So we'll set SLA to the default of gold and let Salesforce users know the customer's contract has been changed from its current level to gold. When performing a lookup against a web API, consider using the connector call option in the following ways. First, identify and configure all object query operations before building your integration solution. This is a good design tactic to save development time. Add a connector call in logic steps or map functions to perform document level queries on the fly. This will negatively impact performance, so this should not be a first resort. You can enable caching, which is a default option in the map functions, to limit the number of API requests for common input records. This caches the query result so it can be used again instead of making multiple queries for the same information. If multiple mappings or logic require the same connector call, consider using dynamic document properties or document caching at the front end of the process. Now both endpoint connectors are built. So I'm going to walk through exercise 20 and demonstrate how to create the map between these resources. This will take a little extra time since we'll be building out a connector call to handle the data needed, not readily available in the source or destination profiles. To update the proper accounts record in Salesforce, we're going to create a map using the database customer account name and the phone information as unique values to update each record. So Salesforce uses an object's internal ID field to identify the records needed to be updated. So this ID field is not available in the database source data, so we're going to do a connector call function and add that to the to query the account based on the name and phone and extract the record's internal ID. So the service level agreement or SLA field can then be hard coded to gold to reflect the new contract level in Salesforce. So we're going to drag and drop a map onto our canvas. And we are going to create a new map tab. And we're going to name this database to Salesforce account update. So DB to SF account update. So in the left mapping window, we're going to select the choose button. And this is going to be the query customer by modified date profile that we selected. So it's going to be a database query customer by modified date. And then we click OK. And then in the right mapping window, we're going to select choose. And this is going to be um, an XML profile type. And it's going to be the newly created Salesforce account update request. So after we've done those, so we have the sourced and the destination profiles, we're going to add a function in. So we'll click add a function from the center of the map. From the category up at the top, we're going to select connector, and it's going to be a connector call. So we're going to click OK. The connector type is going to be Salesforce. The action is going to be Git, and the connection is going to be our Boomi training Salesforce. Again, we moved all of those into our connections fold. Next, for the operation, we're going to need to create a new operation. So in the name window, we're going to name this account query by name slash phone number. And then we're going to, once we've named that account query by name and phone, we are going to import. Then we're going to choose our connection, our Boomi training Salesforce. Next, we're going to choose account underscore C, and the action is going to be a query. Account underscore C, the action is query. It's going to be next. Again, we're going to ignore the account's object tree, and we're just going to hit next and finish when the object tree is built. So next, you can see our query response. So this is our response profile, Salesforce account query response, finish. And then at the bottom of the query window, we're going to make sure uh, account is highlighted. And this is under object, account C, fields. We want to highlight everything so we can 
then uh, unselect everything because the only one we want to select is ID. Once we've done that, we're going to add an expression. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Filters tab. Under Logical, we're going to add an expression. The expression name is going to be name equals. So the field is going to be name, okay. The operator is going to be equal to. All right, once we've done that, we're going to add another expression. Phone equal to. So the field is going to be phone equal to. Once we do that, we're going to save and close. And then we're in the connector call window here. What we're going to do is we're going to add inputs. So if we click on the add input, you're going to see our name, which we're going to add, and you're going to see our phone, which we're going to add. So now on our inputs, we just added the name equals and the phone equals. Now on the output side, we're going to add an output. It's going to be under account C, we're going to select ID and we're going to add that. Then we're going to select OK. So what we're going to do now is we're going to map the source name to the connector call name and the source phone to the connector call phone. And then we're going to take that account ID output and we're going to map it to the ID destination field. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to go down to the SLA underscore C. So this is our service level agreement. And we need to set this as a default value of gold. So by clicking on the arrow next to the SLA underscore C, we can set a default value and we're going to enter gold. So now you can see the SLA underscore C has a default value of gold set. So now what we can do is we can save and close. We can hit OK. We're going to take our map. We're going to put it in between our database start shape and our Salesforce connector. So we're going to connect our start shape to our map, our map to our Salesforce connector, and then we're going to add a logic stop shape to complete the path. And then we're going to, remember, continue processing other execution paths. We're going to leave check. We're going to connect that. And then what we're going to do is we are going to execute the process in test mode by clicking on test. So before we do that, we'll save. We'll click on test. Running on the test atom cloud, we'll run a test. So what we can see, so the SLA was updated to gold. All right, so now you can complete exercise 20, creating a Salesforce update map with a connector call.